Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to an all-new episode of Faux Real with your host, as always, Devlin Wilder. That's me. I'm really excited to welcome my very awesome friend and mega vocalist, Brittany Crush, on the episode. is a magnificent vocalist and a very talented musician. She has a new track out called Big Joke, which you definitely got to take a listen to. Um, along with a brand new music video, which is now on YouTube. And we had a really nice conversation. It was really great to catch up with her and have, uh, have a bit of a chat. We haven't really talked in a while. We used to work at this, uh, <laughs> this fruit-themed pop-up called World of Fruit, and that's um, where we got to know each other, and she's just out there killing it. So I'm really uh, excited for you to hear our conversation. Before we get to it, I would also like you to... Uh, I would like to invite you to send me a text. I am now a part of the community texting platform, along with a number of notables that I'm sure you've heard of, including, oh, Reba McIntyre and Ava DuVernay and Whitney Cummings and all sorts of really cool people. John Legend is also a part of it. So uh, you can actually text me directly. My number is 323-405-9174. And it works just like uh, texting anybody else. So you can just uh, tell me how your day is going. Tell me what you had for breakfast. Actually, don't do that. That's super boring. No, I'm kidding. If you want to tell me what you had for breakfast, hey, go ahead, whatever. If you need a shoulder to cry on, I am totally there for you. You can send me words, emojis, pics, videos, whatever you like. Just uh, just like you're uh, texting anybody else. So that uh, that number is 323-405-9174. And um, I love to connect with you. So uh, definitely check that out. And so let's uh, get right to the action with my awesome guest, Brittany Crush. <laughs> How are you? It's so good to see you. How long has it been since we actually saw each other? Like a year? Huh. Last but summer, yeah, right? Probably a year now. Yep, last summer. That's wow. crazy. Yep. Time flies. It doesn't feel like it. It's been really flying uh, since this whole ridiculous started. Like I've, I've completely. I, I'm completely floating in outer space. Uh, yesterday was Thursday, and I was like, it's Thursday? How is it Thursday already? Didn't make any sense. I know. So, I know. Some, the, week, the weekend comes, and I'm like, ooh, the weekend. Yeah, like, what is the okay, weekend? Uh, I mean, what is it? Really, every day is the weekend. It's always Saturday. Uh, I mean, it's a great thing and a weird thing, you know? Um I'm I'm getting a lot done and yet getting absolutely nothing done. Are you experiencing this at all? I am. I am. It feels that way. It's like I feel like I'm doing things I've never really done, but yet I don't feel satisfied because I'm like with this amount of time, you should be like like campaigning for like presidential. You know what I mean? Like you should be doing a lot. Uh, <laughs> no excuse. <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, we, well, yeah, I would vote for you for president. Are you going to run? Because I will vote for you. I will get, I'll get the campaign going right now because, listen. I would, I would probably, I don't even know. That, that life is just, you know, whatever side of the brain, because, you know, me and you, we're like artists and creators, so like whatever side of the brain, right. like it's, not, it's not checked in for it, me, probably. Yeah. But just fix, I'm awesome. It, it doesn't work, yeah. Well, you're killing it doing everything you're doing. You just released new music. You're always releasing new music. I always see your posts. You're, you're, you've got uh, amazing music videos. I watched three of them in a row. You're, uh, you're making things. You're an influencer. You've got the nip lips. Um, tell me all about that. How did you get involved in that? Did they find you? Did you find them? How did that work? So, nip lips was literally through World of Fruit, actually. Um, really yeah they basically uh they did a couple things they're a new brand um tucson based actually tucson arizona but la is their like sister place that's where they've had their first pop-up so 
Um, they do a lot of work in LA, and because it's just a new brand, uh, remember when, when we had the whole BeautyCon event? Right. So that kind of brought um, all of those beauty brands to World of Fruit, and that's where I first learned of them. And when I, I loved um, the idea, I loved that it was uh, woman owned and operated, and I loved that the entire uh, brand just stands for being authentically you. So, like, I'm not sure how much you know about makeup, but one, Women's makeup and <laughs> can't you tell? I, I got all done makeup. up for you today. I'm kidding. No. <laughs> but basically, like the makeup and feminine product industry, it's not regulated, so there's a lot of toxins and things that have led to cancer and all types of things. So, one, she's adamant about making sure it's healthy and trying to kind of like, you know, be an advocate for those type of things that are happening in those industries. And then two, um. She has an app that she's made that scans your nipple to find the perfect shape. Really? It's so scary. Like a tricorder? You just like... Yeah, so basically she um, she has a biotech background and she read... This is not a new theory. Like This is a theory that's been published in Allure magazine and uh, Cosmo mag- magazine. And it says that women should look for a color that's close to the hue of your nipple color for the perfect nude. So instead of just like buying what you see the model has on the you know poster, you use this app and it's genetically modified for your color, for your tone. So mine might be a little bit darker than yours. Yours might have a little bit more reds or a little bit more orange hues, whatever the case may be. So she studied, she made this app, and she um, tested it on, on women, and 90% of women agreed that they wanted a shade that is close to their nipple color, and she made this whole brand. So there it is. Nip- That's amazing. I'm so glad I asked. That is That is super cool. So, yeah. so it's, so it scans the DNA of your nipples and, and creates a specific color and they have to, um, I've, I've actually watched videos where they're putting together those nail colors. My roommates watch a lot of, uh, you know, cool random things. And, yeah. um, uh, one, one of my roommates is, is also, um, uh, a burgeoning makeup artist. And, uh, so it was fascinating to me to watch them put it together and like mix yeah. all the different colors and yeah. how, how that all works. There's really a lot of research that goes into it. I also yeah. listened to Whitney Cummings podcast, Good For You, and she talks about that a lot too. I'm not sure if she uses nip lips. Maybe she does. I, I don't remember, but Whitney but uh, Cummings. Whitney Cummings, the, the comic. I think she might. I think we met her at IBE this past uh, year. It's Indie Beauty Expo. It was downtown LA. Probably. She's all about it. She, she, she's very, um, she has this running gag of her being, uh, her complexion is very shiny. She's, she's always very shiny. She's always doing these, you know, videos where she's, you know, (laughs) look how shiny I am today. And, um, she might use that product. I, I didn't really ever pay attention to the products, but she's always talking about it. I find that really, really fascinating. That's very cool. Yeah, and they're vegan, and they're sustainably sourced and packaged, so you can recycle all of their packaging. It's made from bamboo. And, um, yeah, it's just they, there's so many other benefits and things that they have going on. But right now they're doing a lot within the community with everything happening. But they're all around just a great brand. So, yeah, because of the BeautyCon after party uh, last year, which sucks, no BeautyCon this year with everything happening. Right. But that's how, that's how I found out that connected. I have a feeling that Moj is probably going to put something else together. She's probably, I, I, I really do have a feeling she's going to do some sort of streaming event. Uh, yeah. You know, she's such a brain. She's such a, she's yeah. such a, um, a forward thinker. I'm sure she'll put something together no matter what, you, you know, because uh, it's such a huge event yeah. every single year. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's huge. Mm-hmm. One of my favorites. So. Yeah, uh, I had I worked the um, the little mini beauty con at the convention yeah. center, yeah. which which was really cool. They had me in their little shop in Moja's shop at the okay. top, so that was okay. that was pretty neat. Yeah, that's fun. Met, that's met fun. a lot of interesting people. A lot of uh, a lot of the big influencers came through. I would yeah. love to I would love to drop their names, but I don't remember off the top of my head. But they all came yeah. through that little shop. It was very neat. Yeah. yeah, there were a lot of influencers last year. A lot. Yeah. That was fun, though. 
definitely will be missing it for sure. So you just uh, you just released a new single, right? A new music video. Yeah, I released a new single called Big Joke, and we released a music video recently. So Big Joke was released on April Fool's Day, and you know that was already pre-planned and thought out. So when COVID came, it was like this kind of sucks. Um, you don't want to seem insensitive, so. You know, it was an interesting time, but to a lot of artists' favor, we do have way more ears listening, way more people who can kind of, you know, tap into these things like podcasts and new music because they have time. Um, and then, yeah, I think sometime last week, I dropped a music video, which was like a virtual reality music video because I wasn't able to film. Sure. Um, but it came out cool. And I really it did come out. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to do an animation video for a long time, so this ah. was like the closest thing I got to it, but it was really fun. So I I feel like, you know, with COVID, there are a lot of downfalls, clearly, but there are also just a lot of like little blessings that have happened that are, you know, kind of cool. I don't know if I would have thought or pushed to invest in a video like that if I wasn't in this situation. So it's cool. It's, a, it's so funny how this has opened up so many um unique creative windows yeah. i've i have a whole list of lists of things now that i'm like i've been working on pilots and uh i'm i'm working on a feature that that not that it didn't like i already had the seed of the idea but just been sitting around so I'm like, well yeah. i might as well write <laughs> exactly nothing but time that's right Also, I just want to throw out, if you, uh, if you got to go work on something else, we can be here as long as, uh, or as short as okay. you want. This, this lasts as long as you're available to be here. And that's, I, I am, I am so thankful that you're coming on to, uh, to do this, this dumb show. Uh, no. it's just something that I put together, you know, and, um, uh, I, you know, I just, this this is so if i wasn't doing this for the podcast i i have to start like doing it i get into my little my my you know my bear cave antisocial hideout yeah. <laughs> and i know you know i'm i'm so i'm so cozy and warm in there and i never want to come out but i i really uh this time has really pushed me to to be a lot more social yeah. while not being physically social. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm seeing so many people have so many different uh, things that are listening and new ventures wanted to and didn't have time to do. So it's pretty awesome. It is. What are you currently working on? If you can reveal. So, I have a song um, called Windows that will be releasing soon. I don't know the exact time. I, I'm thinking end of summer, fall. Um, it's definitely going to be my next big single. Uh, and then on top of that, I've been working on a sound pack that I want to drop, which is basically like um, a bunch of different, I don't know if you know much about production, but there's a, it's a bunch of different sounds, me doing uh, different riffs and runs with my voice and then producers can use it and like a little sampler it. kind of yeah, a mini exactly. album yeah okay yeah so little tiny clips of me singing literally like five seconds long and it's a bunch of them and producers can use them to make beats and and and, and manipulate and make music so um it's something that a lot of uh, producers and beat makers use and mm -hmm. like, like huge producers like um Timberland, who works with Missy Elliott, and they have like their packs out. So if you want like the the sound that he uses, his exact drums or his exact um, you know whatever things he sounds he's using, you can get it for a price. So I'm like, let's put a price on this. Show me that money, honey. Flip me that stack. Oh, I got yeah. you. I got you. <laughs> like voiceover. I've done that for uh, for 
voiceover projects too. Um, I'm I'm missing I'm missing the term off the top of my head, and I should really know. And I'm gonna I'm gonna beat myself up for it later. But um, there's a uh, yeah I'm 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 a part of a, a few different groups that do that. Just just random noises and and uh, little you know sound effects and stuff. Natural sound effects. I used to do that all the time when I was little and drove my parents absolutely insane. You know I I do the um, the uh, you know the the theme from Beverly Hills Cop, and like all like <laughs> all over the place. I just I I would be doing that constantly, driving you know my parents and teachers and classmates totally nuts. It was fun for me though. Jeff, it's so fun. Hey, there's there's full professions. You know, for it, and it's like uh, my boyfriend, he's a producer, so he gets a bunch of sound packs, and he was like, you should do a sound pack with your voice. I mean, if I was a producer, I'd love to have a bunch of, you know, this female voice that I could just use for whatever or put in whenever I want to. So I was like, no. You make your brand what you want it. But for me, I love the out-of-the-box thing things that people aren't thinking of I mean it's so dope when I see peers and people I know have their music in songland you know and shows and scores and sound packs uh, commercial jingles I'm all into commercial jingles I did a few uh, back home before I moved here and radio jingles and I would love to do some more but like yeah like I would love like that would I would be so I wish I could be the person who's like ba -da -ba -ba -ba. oh yeah everybody like, does oh sure so you did some of those. That is so awesome. Uh, yeah. What what kind of jingles did you do, if you don't mind sharing? Yeah, so one was uh, for a school program. So they asked if I could do a song, and it's basically saying that they're open for uh, submissions. And then we made this song about diversity in schools. And then I come on, I'm like, hi, September 7th, you know, enrollment opens. And then went back into my little jingle and it, it works great because my boyfriend he produces and he plays guitar so guitar is one of those instruments where you can kind of go either way so we took it like a very acoustic elevator vibe but it was really it was really smooth but every time i was in the car and i came on you would have thought it was my number one single i'm like that's me that's it music <laughs> <laughs> oh. singles this is what i want you guys to hear that's right no so it was fun Oh man, that's so cool. I, I, uh, I used to do random ads for, I used to, uh, run this electronics business with my dad back in Illinois. We, we did it for years and, um, I did a number of ads for the local radio station and we, we would do those little, little dumb jingles. They were so cheesy. I had so much fun doing them though. It was just not not only for my own ego, you know, I, I've always been an entertainer in my head um, <laughs> since I was little for sure, but it was also really cool to have a project to do with my dad and something that my dad enjoyed doing with me, you know. We are... What's that? I think I saw a picture of your father on your Facebook. Yeah, I posted a picture of us for Father's Day, and I called him on Father's Day, and, you know, we talk every single day. It's really, really nice. Uh, we have gone through some times over the years, for sure. Our relationship has been strained for a number of reasons, and the last few years, we've really, we've really come around. He's come around. He doesn't... He, he's still doesn't really understand what I do or why I keep doing it while I'm not famous. <laughs> you know, why do you keep doing this? I don't understand. Well, yeah. you know, one day it's going to pay off, Dad. One day. It's, it's, it's going to pay off very soon. I got, yeah. I have plans. <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, I'm, I'm working on some things, but uh, me and my dad, we're, we're a lot better than we've ever been, and that feels really good. So, yeah, I, I proudly put that, that picture up. That was, uh, you know, I, I don't remember. I think we were, I don't know where we were. 
<laughs> for that photo. How are you with your parents? Are you close with your dad and your mom? Yeah, I, I am. I'm, I'm really close to my parents. My parents are like, so and I, it's funny because I didn't really realize how rare that is until I got older and as I get older I mean I really don't know I mean I have a few friends but usually it's still maybe one of their parents over the other and um, I, I didn't have both my parents at home so it wasn't a picture-perfect situation by far my my mom and father had me and they weren't they weren't married and they were um, enlisted in the army and they're not supposed to do that I think my father was a higher rank than my mom um so my mom just decided to leave you know when she had to leave when she was pregnant and just not tell anybody to keep his status so um he never lived in the same oh. state as me. yes scandalous. he never lived in the same state as me so uh every um like holidays and for the, the entire summer he would come and, and pick me up and bring me to atlanta where he lived and you know, as I got older, it was just like clockwork. Like I knew like Christmas vacation, you know, in high school, I'm going to Atlanta. As soon as the last day of school, maybe before that, my dad's picking me up, we're going on a plane, we're going back. And as I got, you know, 15, 16, and I, I have close friends who are like family now with people who, you know, their fathers are in their life. And I'm looking at my father just go all these miles. I was like, man, I'm, I'm lucky. And then he could have just been like, you know, to hell with that child. You know, I don't, it's, it's right. just so much easier. So, and then my mom just was always there, but through the years, I just, you know, they were really close, and um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm really close to them. At first with music, my father wasn't too sure. I played basketball competitively, and I really loved basketball growing up, and my dad, he kind of implemented that, so coming from Connecticut, Connecticut uh, is known, well, I've traveled a lot because, you know, military, but they're known for their women's basketball. So when I was actually playing varsity, yeah, he kind of was like, well, that makes no sense. Like, why are you pursuing music? Because it's like they're both those type of fields where you have to take a risk. Right. You know? And they're both a lot of, um, you have to sacrifice a lot of hard ethics. So there's really nobody that you know who's professionally doing sports and professionally doing entertainment. I just don't even know how you would be able to. So it's not like he was like, don't do anything with a risk. He just was like, well, if you don't take that risk, why don't you do this? You've been doing this and you're great at it. And I'm like, because I don't know. I feel I feel music in my, in my heart. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I went with that. And my mom, she always was like, whatever you want to do, do it. And um, basically, you know, now it's it's my dad completely understands it. It's been years now. And he's like, you know, it took, I, I I had a show on a cruise ship and my dad and my family decided to make a whole trip out of it and they came and you know I had like an hour long set and it was after that my dad was like you know girl you got it you got it oh wow yeah what a feeling that must be <laughs> no, I was like I told you he's like no you're pretty good you're pretty good what there had been so no long shit long. dad <laughs> Welcome to the party. Yeah, so he's uh, he's, he's on board, so I'm, I'm grateful. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh -huh. How was performing on a cruise ship? Oh, it was fun. It was it was fun, and then you know afterwards, it you know gave us drinks and food and sure. And, and it's fun because you know you're you're traveling and you're kind of on vacation. I feel like that's kind of the nice thing about being you know in this industry that we're in is sometimes you where you're performing is kind of fun so you get to enjoy wherever you're at as well so um i'm not afraid of boats i love cruises so we had a great time yeah i love uh, i love boats too um I, i've had very few experiences with them but when i traveled with up with people um we were on a number of boats we went uh, took a boat from sweden to germany and a few other places I, I love it. I actually was hired to uh, be a cruise ship performer. This was for, I don't remember which company it was for. This was years and years ago. But <laughs> I made them really mad because I, I, had never, I had never auditioned for anything like that before. I didn't actually, uh, I never saw anybody in person. I sent them all of my materials from performing and up with people and stuff like that before. And the guy was like, oh, 
you're you're perfect. You're exactly the kind of performer that that we need. He booked me. Um, I got the contract, and then I had also been waiting. Meanwhile, <laughs> ellipses. I had been waiting to hear back from this feature that I had auditioned for. And that same day or like within the same 24 hour period, I got a confirmation that I was booked for this feature. And I was like, oh God, you know, uh, w one of those decisions that just weighed on me super heavily and I thought about it and thought about it and talked to friends about it. And I decided to go with this feature because I was really, you know, my trajectory has always been towards television and film. And I took it and then the film ended up getting canceled. And uh, so I lost well, out on both. I, you know what? It's funny. I only had a one time show. It wasn't the contract, but I was offered a contract at one point. And this was after I had graduated, or maybe my senior year, I had auditioned. They came to my, my school, and um, I think it was for Carnival. It was cool. We, we had to do um, just a small time, girl. You know, we, that was the audition. And, you know, I, oh, yeah. I the pay is good, right? The pay was pretty good. And then you stay on the boat. But it was too long. The contract that they had was like two years. And I was like, oh, wow. I can't do it. I can't commit. And I don't, I feel like what happens with my music, I don't feel like I have two years to give to you guys. And then it's like, like you, you people are like, well, you get to save a lot of money that you could put into your own career, which is true, but two years on a boat. And I once you're on contract, that's it. And you're, you're just there and you can't like being on a boat too is one of those things where you're just out there and you can't really communicate you can obviously still there's you know still some communication but you can't be as active on social media there's all of that kind of thing to you that you really have to think about and um yeah that's it's a lot it's a lot like you don't get the suite with the balcony so that's the oh no 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 you're living in a boat closet you got a boat closet absolutely yeah. yeah, so. yeah. Okay. It worked out that way. So maybe yours would have turned into that. So, hey. <laughs> what a, what a coulda, shoulda. I guess, yeah. I guess I'll guess i never know. Yeah. Uh, we'll not be working for Carnival Cruises anytime soon. That's <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you are, you are close with both of your parents. Did they... Um, they were, they were very, uh, they were very supportive of what you wanted to do. Yeah. Um, like, you know, they, they kind of were the kind the type of like, whatever you want to do. It wasn't so much like, Oh, it's music. It's like whatever. And thinking back, both of them had, um, unique relationships with their parents growing up. Both of them had one parent who wasn't, you know, in their life and it affected them a lot. So they both were like, we want to try and be the best parents we could be to you. So we didn't get support, so we want to support you. We, you know, my dad loved football, and he probably could have went to the NFL, and the person who played, um, you know, if he was hurt or whatever, they actually went to the league, you know, and I think that's called second string. I don't know football like that, but I think whoever sure. it was who, who, you know, played for my dad, if my dad would get injured or needed a break, he ended up going to the league. So, you know, a lot of people told him, but because – his family didn't support him and he didn't come from a place where it's like, you know, believe in yourself, believe in your dream. He went to the army. And yeah, he's like very patriotic and he's the strongest guy I know, but you know, he has health, all type of health things from going to war. And you know, it's just kind of like, uh, you know, so physical, mental, psychological. Yeah. That, that really takes a toll on you and, and all the ways. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's to the point where you start wondering if it really is worth it because there's things you just don't get back. You know, um, my dad is 100% disabled and through the through the military. So, you know, he physically is okay, but like he's just had a lot of things that's happened. So that's a part of the people not believing in you. So my dad always was like, if you want to do it, go for it. Um, my mom put, started me in theater. That was my foundation, acting and stuff. And then once I found out that music and singing was the thing for me, then... 
that was it. It was completely into singing and jazz choirs and trios and studying music. And then going off to school, I studied music business because my parents both kind of were like, you know, you can get a degree singing. And a lot of my friends, because I went to a performing arts school, they did go to school at Berkeley or whatever, and they studied music. And I, I did too. I did want to study voice performance, but... My family were like, you know, if you can get something that's that's music or entertainment and still like a little more solid, so we're not paying thousands for you to sing, we think you have a great voice. Right. <laughs> and uh, my mom was like, you know, Beyonce, all these people, they don't need, they don't need, you know, degrees. If you're gonna go out and do it, you're gonna do it. You don't need a degree in college for that. So I was like, you know, if I'm gonna go and spend thousands, I'll just get something that in a field that matters. So I did music business. It was like a business. It was a business major, bachelor's, but. They had a concentration in the music industry. A lot of schools don't offer it, but it was it was cool because I got to learn about radio promotions and how the royalties work on radios and contracts and how people get stuck in 360 deals go bankrupt, even though they're number one on the billboard charts. So it was like perfect And for me. so many artists have gotten caught in that trap. So, so many artists. And you, I, I read about the, that sort of thing all the time. And... Uh, one of my heroes, Tiffany, who I had on this program, name drop, uh, she like she got into so many. Uh, the first contract that she signed, you know, uh, was uh, was really bad. And of course, she had a relationship with her um, her producer, and uh, that uh, that went very badly, and uh, she lost a lot of money, and you know. Um, you just hear about it all the time. That's really great to have that understanding of it. It's very, yeah. very important if you're if you're really going to progress as a professional yeah. artist. You really need to have all of that information. You know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important. So, yeah, I'm grateful. Of course, you're always going to have those moments where you know your parents want you to be safe, so maybe taking a risk. You know, like I. Uh, the day that I did the, the Staples Center, I was in between my leases of two apartments, and I actually ended up coming back to LA earlier than I was supposed to when I got that gig. So, you know, of course, I still have the time where my parents are like, are you sure it's worth it? Do you right. really want to, you know, start paying for hotels until you go? And I'm like, yep, it's worth it. Trust me. So there's those moments, but for the most part, they're like gun ho about it, and they support me. That is... That is so wonderful and fantastic. Um, yeah. My my parents do too. I as mentioned, I wish my dad understood it a little bit more. I I wish they both understood it a little a little more, but yeah, you know that's fine. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. I'll show up on Brooklyn Nine Nine or the Goldbergs or whatever it is, and you know they'll they'll get okay. All right, okay. Exactly. Now I see. My yeah. dad has such terrible taste in television. We suggest things to each other all the time. I shouldn't say that about my dad. He has his taste. I have mine. But I can't watch anything that he suggests to me. And it, I I just don't, I don't understand. I suggested Fleabag to him. I'm like, he'll love the show. It's yeah. it's super irreverent. It's it's way out there. It's just his kind of like oddball humor, which he gave to me. I'm like, he will love it. He's like, yeah, I don't, I don't like the 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 main woman on this show. I'm like, Phoebe Waller Bridge? What are you talking about? You don't like Phoebe Waller Bridge? Uh, what? But he loves shows like uh, he loves oddball humor and like police drama. So. He loved Monk, you know, uh, and uh, he's what been... What's like Blacklist? What's that? Oh, Blacklist, right, with James Spader. I don't know that he's seen that. That's a I'm good addicted. suggestion. So addictive. Yeah? Yeah, maybe me and your dad. <laughs> okay. Listen, you make some suggestions and I'll pass them right along because he's always watching new things. I, uh, I'm watching Search Party right now with Ali Ashakat. And um, have you seen this? It's a TBS show, but they've had it on like, um, I don't know where I'm watching it. There are too many freaking platforms. Uh, but it's, it's a great comedy, but also a murder mystery and kind of an action drama at the same time. I'm really enjoying it. 
I think I lost you. Uh-oh. Yep. I definitely did. All right. Well, meanwhile, I'm going to... Oh, there we go. <laughs> Hi, everybody that's joining the chat. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to add Brittany back, I hope. Let's see if this works. Hopefully this works. There we go. Technology is so embarrassing. Technology is so embarrassing. <laughs> I literally was turning the value up. And oh. I, I just, I guess my pointer just drifted a little bit and you were gone. That, that's okay. My, my pointer drifts all over. I like to talk with my hands, so I'm always <laughs> flailing about, which is really the, my, my technical setup. Uh, I got to figure out how, I got to figure out a professional setup whatever that means. Because right now, what I'm doing is, for the live, I'm holding my phone okay. directly into the mic and recording on Audacity. So I got a, I got a brand new shiny Blue Yeti mic, which I'm very uh, proud of. I, I, it took me, it only took me three years to get a professional mic, <laughs> to actually purchase one for myself, but it, uh, it works, it works pretty well. Listen, as long as you sound good, that's all that matters, you see. <laughs> I want well, you to yeah, sound I mean, good. Uh, I wanted to um, also just let you know, I do have to run for my little eyelash appointment, but I sure. wanted to tell you that I really appreciate you having me on here. Um, I appreciate I you added, being here. I added the page, and if you could, please, please send me the link so I can post it on my story, because I'm sure you have like... You have 100%. This is going to, the live will, um, it, it auto saves and then it'll save the clip, you know, in my feed, you know yeah. how it works. You're, yeah. you're more technologically advanced than I am, no doubt. Oh, uh, I, <laughs> you need to like hire somebody for this. <laughs> I, I definitely will as soon as I have the money. I've been doing this for yeah. three years though and I just keep doing it myself. I've had other people work on the show. I have shopped it out to, to have yeah. it edited a few times and it's it ends up not being my style and I'm like well if you're yeah. gonna if you're gonna put it together for me you gotta keep it in my style and nobody does that except me so whatever uh, so before you go plug all of your things where can people find you how do they get how do they watch your videos uh, yeah. charities how do they find nip lips tell me all of the things so nip lips is in my bio so you guys can click um oh and shout out to the young lady who just joined the chat she's actually the one who made the big joke video we were just talking about that um who so is that yes, you guys can out, um her, I, I don't know how to pronounce i'm gonna say it's oh god this is so embarrassing Philichal? Philichal. oh gosh i don't know but um, awesome underneath it says join so people who are watching this later when Devlin uploads this or whatever since it'll be saved and archived. You guys can click that if you guys like the video and want to check out the person who made it. Um, it's up on my on my page. And for everything Britney Crush, I always tell people to please check out my website, www.britneycrush.com. Put a lot of work into that. And then, of course, Instagram, Facebook, um, YouTube has the official video as well. And like I said, Nip Lips information is right in my Instagram bio. So. Awesome. And you're everywhere at Brittany Crush. That's B R I T T N E Y C R U S H. Yes. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Devin, for having me. Thanks for coming on, Brittany. Enjoy your weekend. See you all later. Right, bye. Remember, you can follow me as always across all the places at Devlin Wilder. That's D E V L I N W I L D E R. And for real at Faux Real Pod. That's F A U X R E A L P O D. That's it for this one. See you on the next one. Bye.